This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, but not another World Chalice combo tutorial. We're going to take a break from the excessive amounts of World Chalice combo tutorials I've been putting out as of recently, and we're going to take a look at another deck that I also really like a lot, and that is... Neptibus Mermails, essentially. Mermails post Neptibus coming out has always been one of my like favorite decks to pilot because of just what Neptibus allows the deck to have in terms of its functionality. But the deck did get hindered a lot by Master Rule 4 in the essence of the way that we've been trying to play the deck since the last uh, the last year's uh, set release of Invasion Vengeance giving us Totally Awesome has been to try and summon Bahamut Sharks and Toads very effectively going first, giving the deck a good going first game plan, thus making the deck being able to be built to be going first, essentially, and then also allowing the deck to be very strong going second. That's It's something that Mermel's has kind of been really good at going first and second, but if you're trying to build the deck towards going second, it's been problematic in the past, basically. It's been very lackluster to say the, the least, but building to go first sort of you know bypasses those issues especially now that we have such a strong card like totally awesome in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! but Master Rule 4 hindered this deck's ability to make totally awesomes with Bahamut Sharks and things like that going first so this deck needs to adopt a new game plan and with Master Rule 4 introducing Link Summonings that is the new game plan that you need to be adopting being able to use Link Monsters in a way that is effective for the deck so what I'm gonna be showing you today is a generic two card combo of just Neptibus plus Mermel Abysteus, and it yields you with two Firewall Dragons that unfortunately use their effects in the combo sequence, uh, but then you end with a Bahamut Shark, a Totally Awesome, and a Mulan Glace that you summon. So you you have a very strong going first board there, because you take two cards out of your opponent's hand with the Mulan Glace, and then Totally Awesome gets to negate a third card, while also getting you a water back to your hand, so overall, it's very good. And it's only a two-card combo, like I said, involving Neptibus and Mermel Abysteus. Now, it's obviously very expandable, as most Mermel combos are, and it obviously gets better with certain other extenders that you can provide into the combo sequence. So, I'll be showing you just the generic two-card combo of this, and then I'll be showing you one of the more extendable combos just by adding a third card to the combo sequence after I show you it the first time through, because with just these two cards, it yields you the worst outcome, but it's still a very good outcome that still lets this deck build for being able to go first. So anyway, the way this combo is performed is you normal summon your Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, and you use its effect sending Dragoons to the graveyard to add Dragoons to your hand, and then Dragoons in the grave will trigger, adding your Mermel Abyss Megalo to your hand. Now from here, you're going to activate Teus' effect, discarding Dragoons to summon it, and then Dragoons will trigger, searching another copy of Neptibus the Atlantean Prince, and Teus will trigger, searching your Mermel Abyss Gunned. Now from here, we're going to perform a Link Summon with the Neptibus and the Teus into our first Proxy Dragon. Now you could make Master Boy in certain iterations of the combo sequence here, but you really don't want to be doing it in this one if you're only doing this two-card combo, because making Proxy Dragon to be immediately linked away with is completely fine because of the fact that it doesn't put an additional water in your grave. And if you make Mass Star Boy, then you're going to be uh, you're going to be putting extra waters in your grave. That's going to be messing with your ability to summon Mulan Glace later in the sequence of play. So that's something that you really need to keep in mind is your water count for this one. But so you're going to activate Mermel Abyss Megalo's effect, discarding the Neptibus and the Gund to summon the Megalo. Megalo can add you either the Equip Spell or uh, Abyss Sphere. Uh, all depending on what you want to specifically uh, set up. But your Neptibus and your Gund are going to trigger Engrave, and you're going to summon back the Abysteus, and you're going to summon back the Atlantean Dragoons off Neptibus, right? So at this point, you still have four waters in Grave. So now from here, you're going to Link Summon with the Atlantean Dragoons and the Proxy Dragon, treating it as a two uh, for a Link Summon into a Decode Talker in your Extra Monster Zone. Now from here, since you've opened an extra monster zone space in your main monster zones, you're going to overlay with the Mermel, uh, Abyss Megalo, and Abysteus into your number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk. Now what this card does is it lets you detach both materials from it. Or is it just one material? No, it's two materials. Uh, you detach both materials from it, your opponent takes no further uh, battle damage, or is it just damage in general? Um, no battle damage for the rest of the turn. And you summon as many tokens as you can to the field. So, you're going to summon four of these level 6 wind uh, machine tokens to your field off of the galaxy tomahawk. And these are going to be great for your link summoning. That's the entire point. You literally scapegoated turn 1. That, that's good. 
All right, so from here, what you're going to do is since you still have this zone being opened by a Deco Talker, you're going to link away with Galaxy Tomahawk and a token into your second Proxy Dragon in the center of your game map. No matter what side you're working from, Proxy Dragon will end up in the center. Uh, that's just the best outcome for you. Then from here, you're going to link with Deco Talker and one of the tokens into a Firewall Dragon in the zone that Proxy Dragon points to. So you vacated your extra monster zone. And so from here, you have a ton of waters engraved. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Firewall Dragon is going to help us fix that issue, essentially. But so what you're going to do from here is you're going to link away with one of the tokens into a Link Spider above the Firewall Dragon. So this uses a lot of cards in your extra deck. This combo literally uses 10 cards in your extra deck, but it's actually kind of okay, considering that these cards are like powerful cards like Firewall Dragon and stuff that can take the place of those other Xyz monsters that you were playing maximum copies of that you're not really going to be making as much anymore in the deck because of how the game has changed. But so, from here, you're going to activate Firewall Dragon's effect because he's co-linked with two cards, and you're going to add two copies of Atlantean Dragoons from your graveyard to your hand. So this puts you at five waters in your grave because you use the first Proxy Dragon and not Mass Starboy. And so from here, you're going to link with Proxy Dragon and the last token into a Link 3 or a Link 2, but Link 3 is just better for this specific combo sequence. If you had extenders, you could have gone into another Link 2. But you're going to make Gaia Saber the Lightning Shadow. And this Proxy Dragon went to the graveyard with a Firewall Dragon pointing at it, so you're going to be able to Special Summon a card from your hand. So you'll Special Summon one of the Atlantean Dragoons that you added back. Now from here, you'll link with Link Spider and the Gaia Saber, being 3 and 1, into another Link 4. So you'll link into a second copy of Firewall Dragon. Now you can put the Firewall Dragon either here or in your extra monster zone. It honestly doesn't really matter. I prefer to put it here because I like to summon my Toad here for some reason. That way, like, I'm always keeping the extra monster zone open uh, in case things are, uh, you know, going weird. But anyway, Gaia Saber and Link Spider both went to the graveyard next to this Firewall Dragon. So regardless of which one you wanted to trigger it on, the Firewall is going to be summoning the Atlantean Dragoons from your hand. Now from here, you're just going to overlay these two cards into your Bahamut Shark, and then your Bahamut Shark you are going to detach the Atlantean Dragoons from to summon your Totally Awesome, and then the Dragoons will trigger searching for your Mulan Glace, the Elemental Lord. And now from here, you have six waters in grave. you got the Dragoons, you've got Teus, Megalo, and you've got Gund and two Neptibuses. So you've got six waters in grave. And this Firewall Dragon is unused. And that's why I said that both Firewall Dragons get used here. Because you use this second Firewall Dragon to add any water that you want from your graveyard to your hand. So you can either add Neptibus, you can add Gund, uh, you can add a few different things. Especially since Toad is going to add another water back anyway when it goes uh, when it goes to grave. So there's things to, there's things to consider and meld around there as well. Uh, but so you add whatever water you want back to your hand. And then you have five waters. So you special summon Moulin Glace. And then all of a sudden, your opponent is getting dropped for two cards, and then the Totally Awesome is going to be able to negate a card there. So this is the first sequence that is just these two cards, and it is by far the worst of the combo sequences, because when you expand upon it with other combo pieces from your hand, like things like Aqua Spirit, just turning it into a three-card combo changes a lot of what you're able to do, because it keep, allows you to keep resources in your hand, it allows you to do all these other sorts of things. So let me rewind this for a second, and let me show you what can be done with just adding Aqua Spirit to your hand, just to extend the combo out. Alright, so like I said, now what I'm going to show you is a three card combo just adding Aqua Spirit into the mix. What this does is it actually changes quite a lot of what you're able to end with, because it allows you to keep one of your Firewall Dragons loaded, but then it also allows you to add other cards from your graveyard to your hand and keep them there. Um, to like not even have to be combo specific, like adding the two Dragoons back. Um, and it just helps you hit your water count in Grave for Moving Glace a lot easier. So. The way this one goes is the same as the first, you normal Neptibus, you send Dragoons and add Dragoons, and then Dragoons will trigger adding your Megalo. You'll discard the, uh, the Dragoons for Teus, and the Dragoons and the Teus will trigger, adding Gund and another copy of Neptibus. You're going to do the exact same thing where you link into Proxy Dragon in your extra monster zone, and then you drop the Megalo. Megalo discarding the Gund and the Neptibus, and the Gund and the Neptibus will trigger, bringing back Teus and your Dragoons. And again, this searches either the equip, the equip spell that you want, or it searches the uh, the Abyss Sphere if you're playing it. Completely up to you, completely build specific. Uh, but then you link three into these, into Decode Talker, and then you go into the Galaxy Tomahawk again, and summon all of your tokens. 
So I'm just trying to get us back to the point where it actually matters that we have this Aqua Spirit. But so you summon your four tokens. And now from here is where it starts mattering. So what we're going to do is we're going to link with the Tomahawk and a token into the second Proxy Dragon in the center again. You link with Decode Talker and one of the tokens, specifically one here if you haven't already used it, into your Firewall Dragon, your first Firewall Dragon, and then you're going to link away with a token into the Link Spider again. Now from here, you get to change what you uh, what you do, because, because you have the Aqua Spirit in your hand, uh, you're not going to be reliant on using Gaia Saber from your extra deck, one, and two, you're not going to be reliant on adding two Dragoons back from your graveyard to your hand. So, you'll activate this firewall that has got two pointing at it, and you're going to definitely add back a Dragoons. That's mandatory. You have to add back one of them. Uh, and then you can add back whatever card you want from here. Um, so, like, you can add back Gun, you can add back Nephthibus. It's It's honestly whatever. Now, from here... Instead of having to make you know, Gaia Saber to trigger to summon two Dragoons out of your hand, uh, like in that order, you can just skip that step. And so you'll link with Link Spider, Proxy Dragon, and this last token into your second Firewall. And that Firewall will then trigger to summon your Dragoons out of your hand. And now from here, you've got five Waters Engrave. But, so you're just going to rotate a card out with uh, Aqua Spirit. So you'll summon Aqua Spirit. Banishing something that doesn't matter, probably your duplicate Neptibus, to be completely honest with you. And then you summon the Aqua Spirit from your hand. You overlay these two cards into your Bahamut Shark. You detach the Dragoons for Bahamut Shark, again, to summon your Totally Awesome in whatever zone you want to put it in, whether it's this one or this one. And then you are going to use the, uh, the Dragoons effect that went to Grave to search for your Moulin Glaze. And now this firewall is still loaded, it does not use its effect yet. And you have one Dragoons Engrave, two, three, four, five waters overall with the two Dragoons and these cards. None of the other cards are water in your grave because the Aqua Spirit removed a water from your grave to summon itself and then uh, and then replaced a water engrave by detaching the uh, the Dragoons that was on board. But so you have five engrave, so you special the Moulin Glace, you drop two cards out of your opponent's hand, you have Toad on the board, and this is actually just really good for you overall. Um, I really like the fact that Toad, being in either of these zones, triggers Firewall Dragon when you send it to Grave. Uh, because you send Toad to Grave to negate a card, right? And then your Firewall Dragon triggers. Um, and especially, like, in this, in both of these combos, you end with a monster in your hand that is summonable. So what you're capable of doing, actually, is ca you're capable of doing a bunch of different stuff. Um, in the form of, like, tributing your Toad to negate a card... Uh, your Toad will trigger his Chainlink 1 to add a card back, and then Firewall Dragon will trigger his Chainlink 2 to summon a card from your hand. So you can do things like add Megalo back to your hand and then immediately summon it. So like, there's there's a lot of cool little nifty tricks that you can do uh, with this sort of stuff. And if the Bahamut Shark and Toad both live until the next turn, you still have a zone open to summon another Toad into with Bahamut Shark. Uh, but then this Firewall Dragon is also loaded. So like, this is just infinitely better. Like The more cards that you have as far as extenders go in your Mermo hands... Uh, the more you get to keep your Firewall Dragons, like, loaded, and you can actually make more Link Summons happen. This is a very generic, very, like, sort of piss-poor use of your resources in terms of what you're doing, because in this one you use 9 cards out of your extra deck, in the first one that was 2 cards you use 10 cards in your extra deck. Basically, for the more extenders you have in your hand that you're able to throw at this combo sequence, the least... Uh, or the less amount of cards you have to use out of your extra deck to pick up the slag. But so, this deck, this deck is very good at, uh, at maintaining that sort of balance where, like, if you're short on resources in your hand, you can get access to them out of your extra deck, uh, which is actually kind of cool. But anyway, those were just two simple combos I wanted to show you guys. If you're trying to play Mermails, I definitely think playing a build built towards going first is definitely the way to go. I'm not sure what your extra deck would look like because, like I said, like this, these combos are very extra deck heavy, like heavily reliant on your extra deck being full of cards to combo with. But at the same time, like you're comboing into Firewall Dragons and Bahamut Shark, totally awesome. So I don't think the other cards in your extra deck necessarily matter anymore, as long as you're able to use like heavy infantry and marksmen to out cards. You're using these to out cards. You're using these to out cards. Like it just becomes a very efficient, like, and fluid engine at doing what it needs to do to be very well rounded at uh, at basically outing threats and stuff like that. So that's just my own personal opinion. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh videos. And links is always in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the content I produce and want to help support my ability to continue making content, 
then backing me on Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into my monthly raffle giveaway as a reward system, as well as reward tiers get you into my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh! and other things. So if you're interested in any of those things, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on Patreon and consider backing me over there. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently backing me on Patreon. You help out a ton, as I always say, and you always have my eternal gratitude, as I always tell you. But other than that, like I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.